Now let's take a look at CMOS logic gates. So we have d looked at how you create transistors that are used within the CMOS kind of logic approach. And we had an NMOS and we had a PMOS. And just real briefly the way these operate is you have a drain, you have a source, and you have a gate on the NMOS. And you can think of it as if you apply positive voltage on the gate relative to the source, then what will happen is that the drain and the source will, be, will allow current to flow. So this is very similar to a switch. And in fact, that's how we use the NMOS transistor when we build CMOS logic gates. So a switch uh, approach to viewing this NMOS transistor would be like this. So you could have this switch where you have the drain source and this switch will close or open depending on the gate voltage. <coughs> and the gate voltage, you can think of it as if it's positive, then this switch will be closed. And if it is negative, it will be open. Okay? So negative is, so positive is closed, and actually a better way to say it would be zero would be open. Now when you say positive, what are we talking about? Well, it's a positive voltage relative to the lowest voltage in the system, which when, we'll see when we, uh, when we actually build the first gate that the lowest voltage in the system is going to be ground, and it'll actually be connected to the source. So if you think about just putting a positive voltage on the gate, it will cause this, this switch to close and then current will flow. <coughs> We're not going to use the transistor in, in any other configuration. We're not going to use it like in an analog situation where we might have it somewhat conducting current and or sometimes conducting a little current, sometimes a lot of current. What we want to do is we want to fully close the transistor. So we're going to apply a very high voltage here, as high as, as necessary. And we're going to close this thing, and then we will allow as much current to flow as possible. So we're going to treat this as a switch. <coughs> now let's take a look at the PMOS. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have our drain, and we're going to have our source. And what we need to do, or excuse me, we're going to source up there in our drain right there. And we know it's a PMOS because we have our inversion bubble right there. And the way this is going to work is we need, in order to turn this on and let current flow, what we need is we need to produce a negative voltage with respect to the source to the gate. <coughs> so this needs to be lower than this voltage. So said another way, let's just say that, I don't know, let's just say that this was 5 volts on the source and this was 5 volts <coughs> on the uh, gate. This would be off. So there would be no current flowing through this. So to turn it on, what we do is we have to drop the gate voltage to something that is lower than the source voltage. So another way to, to say that is that the gate to source voltage is negative if you look at it with respect to this terminal to that terminal. But in essence, what you're doing is you're just trying to make this gate voltage less than the source voltage in order to turn this on. So if we think about uh, the switch notation of this, we would have this switch, and we'd have our source up here and our drain right here, and then we'd have a control gate, which sits here, and we can think about it where when you have a negative voltage with relative to the highest voltage, the source, relative to the source, this would be open, and then when you have zero volts relative to the source, it would be closed. Now this, we kind of are, are glossing over how this actually uh, works a little bit, and that's because we have to think about how do you get a negative voltage and how do you get zero voltage across this between the gate and the source of a PMOS in order to turn it on. And that comes to, that comes back to kind of the fundamental principle of CMOS of how do we want to construct these gates to give us the simplest, uh, the simplest kind of system possible. Well, here's what we're going to do. In a CMOS system, for the NMOS, we are always going to connect the lowest voltage in the system, which is ground, <coughs> to the source. Okay, so this is going to be zero volts. That will allow us to turn on and off this switch by simply either putting zero volts or, let's say, a high voltage. Let's just say we're going to use the highest voltage in the system, which is actually what we do. But let's go ahead and put VCC on there. So if you think about that, we are now going to have a situation where let's just let's cross that out and let's just now focus on voltages. If I put zero volts on the gate, so this is the control, I will have zero volts relative to the source. That's off. It's not going to be it's not going to be closed, so no current will flow. 
But if I put VCC there, I have a voltage potential that's greater than the threshold voltage, which we talked about where you have to be greater than the threshold voltage to turn this on. This is now going to be on. <clears throat> and we're able to do that uh, since a voltage is always with respect to two points. The points we're looking at is the lowest point is going to be the source, and we tie that to ground or zero volts in CMOS, and everything is relative to that with respect to the gate. Now when you come to the PMOS, we need to do something a little bit different. <clears throat> we need to create a negative voltage, but we don't want to have a negative power supply in our system. It would be really nice if we could just have a, a basic gate that had a single power supply, VCC, and a single ground, and not have to have something like a, a negative VCC. We don't want to do that. That'll, that causes things to be a little bit more complicated. So the question becomes, how do you create a negative voltage when you have a, a power supply and a ground? Well, you just remember that a voltage is with respect to two points. So if I measure my voltage with respect to the source, just like I did over here, then I could tie my source to VCC. So I'm always going to have my PMOSs with the source tied to VCC. And then when I come over to here, if I had VCC on the gate, the voltage between here would be zero volts. So what I could do is I could convert this over to my notation where I had, if I have VCC on the gate, that is going to be no voltage with respect to the source, and that will be off. But then what if I took this gate voltage and I put it to zero volts, which would be ground? <clears throat> then I'm going to have a negative VCC worth of voltage drop with respect to the source, and that would then cause this transistor to turn on. So if I then had zero volts or ground, this transistor would actually turn on. <clears throat> so the, the key concept with PMOS is that we need a negative voltage. So to get it, we, re we reference it with respect to the power supply. Okay? That's why you, whenever you have a PMOS, you can never have the drain connected to the or you can never have the drain connected to ground or the source connected to ground. It, ha it always has to have the source connected to VCC because that's the only way we can get that negative power supply. Okay. So now what does this do for us? Well, the first thing that you want to really notice here is these two transistors are acting in a purely complementary way. When I have VCC on the inputs, one is on, one is off. When I have zero on the inputs, one is on, one is off. We can now use that to our advantage to create our first basic gate, and we're going to do that by connecting the inputs together so that we always have a situation where one of the transistors is on, one of the transistors is off. So let's take a look at an inverter, and we'll, t we'll walk through how it actually works. So I come along, and I'm going to do an inverter. And here's what I have. I'm going to take a PMOS transistor, and I'm going to, as we talked about before, to connect the source up to VCC. And then I'm going to have the input right there. And then I'm going to connect its drain to the drain of an NMOS transistor. And then I'm going to connect the, the source of the NMOS transistor to ground. So I have this sort of situation. I'm going to define the output to be this terminal right here. And now, like we talked about, we want one switch to be on and one switch to be off at all times. But since they act in a complementary manner, let's tie their inputs together. So that way, in, the in will turn one on and one off, and then we'll take a look at how the output works. So here's the, con the configuration for a CMOS inverter. And let's now talk about what signal levels you're going to have. Well, there's only, the inputs are either in our abstract sense, they're either going to be a 0 or a 1. But if you really think about that, the levels, we really want them to be low and high. But what do those lows and highs really mean? Well, let's start with low being 0 volts or ground, and let's make high the highest voltage in our system, which is VCC. So that's what we're going to test out the inputs with, and let's see what kind of outputs we produce. So. First of all, let's, let's do the situation where n is equal to a 0. Now, when I say n is equal to a 0, uh, what I mean there is that it's a 0 in terms of a binary code, but it's also a 0 in terms of the voltage. It's ground. When I say n is equal to a 1, that means that n is equal to the highest voltage in the system, which is a VCC. So let's draw the switch diagram of this. So I'm going to have my 
PMOS transistor, and we know that when the gate is a zero, this is going to be closed. So this is actually going to be closed. So I have VCC right here, and the output comes right there, and then I have my NMOS right here, and, but I know that when I have an input on an NMOS of a zero, this is going to be open. So I can say that this is on and this is off, on being representing closed and then off being open. And so we have this thing where I had a zero on my control and a zero on my control, and that caused the transistors to act in a complementary manner. So take a look at what I've done, though. What I have done to the output is I have effectively shorted it to the power supply. So I've just closed the switch and I created a wire that went from my output to VCC. So that means my output is VCC. Notice that the NMOS was open. So I didn't have a situation where I created a short between the power supply and ground. I always had, when I had the top, what we call a pull up, pull up to VCC uh, turned on, the bottom, what we call pull down, was always off. That's the complementary nature of these transistors. So I didn't have a situation where I had any current flowing VCC to ground. So look at what I've done. When I had an input of a zero, my output was VCC, which is one, which is the highest voltage in the system, and we'll code that as a high or one. Okay, so that seemed to work. Let's look at the other half of it. Now I have a, a one on my control, so my N is a one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my PMOS transistor, so I have a VCC, and I have my switch there. But when I have a 1 on the control of my PMOS, it is open, or what we call off. And then when I look at my NMOS, I have a 1 on the control. That means it's closed. So I close the, the switch, and that is now on. Well, look at what I have done to my output. I have shorted it to ground. So I have created an output which is equal to ground, also equal to 0 volts, also equal to a logic 0. So I did it. I have when my input was a 1, my output was a 0. I have successfully created a CMOS inverter. A lot of things have come together to make this happen. The first one is that I needed two complementary switches. One of them is going to be used to drive a high. One of them is going to be used to drive a low. The high driving is done by the PMOSs. So the PMOS always shorts the output to the VCC supply in order to create a 1. Whenever I want a zero on the output, I use the NMOS transistors, and I short the output to a ground. Now, it was very important that if I was driving a high, I did not connect the NMOS to ground. I could not connect the output to the ground, because if I connected both the output to a uh, VCC and also to ground, then what I would have is I would have a situation where I would have a short between the power supply and the ground, and this device would burn up. So the nice nature of this complementary transistors is that one will always be on, one will always be off, so I, I can avoid that situation just inherently through the design of connecting the inputs together. So that now is a CMOS inverter. Another concept of this is that in CMOS, a 1 is the highest power supply in the system, and which is VCC, the highest voltage in the system, and, and a low, or a 0, is the lowest voltage in the system. Now, we tested this by just applying those to the inputs, but the inputs dictated that the output would simply be shorted to VCC and shorted to ground, depending on what output value it was running. So that inherently then verified that the inputs to these gates would be, indeed, VCC and ground, because the outputs of the gate will drive other gates. So that is a CMOS inverter.